Welcome to A Game of Ice and Fire, a video series devoted to A Song of Ice and Fire War Game by Cool Mini or Not. We cover all aspects of the hobby with tactics and list build videos, painting tutorials of varying levels, and battle reports. For my free folk list, I decided to take Harma as my commander. And uh, this is essentially the list that I had from the tactics video that I had done. But I did shift one thing around. I removed the followers of Bone because I just, on paper, they just don't seem good with her. And I replaced them with uh, another unit of Cave Dweller Savages and ended up adding Jarl to that list just to see how it pans out for the, the army, see if it works for me or not. Go ahead. All right, John here playing Starks again. Uh, Eddard is my commander, again, on Honor Guard, again. Uh, this time, <laughs> I got some Outriders with Brendan Tully. Figured, you know, stick that in for a 10-point module, see how that worked out. Yeah, it's essentially the same list we played last time, but yep. instead of Flayed Men, you've got out. those guys. So, yep. And some Zerkers with Young Rob, and uh, Kratigman Trackers with the Warden, and Greywind. Yep, if it ain't broke, don't fix it, right? Exactly. So for deployment, I uh, have Cave Dweller Savages on the flanks because that's where I expect them to go. Then Free Folk Raiders are peppered in between. Uh, Harma is on the opposite side of the Palisade. This is Fire and Blood that we're playing, so I really just want to try and get my opponent to kind of converge into the middle Well, so Harma can influence a lot of things and uh, have the Cave Dweller Savages with their speed 6 just burn up the sides to start getting flanks. Uh, the, my one failure in deployment here is that that Free Folk Raider unit that's behind the Palisade, they really should have been tilted one way or the other so that they could have marched a little bit easier when they started. I'm just so used to setting things out front facing yeah and, and when we when he set it up he actually's like yeah i'm gonna put these guys to the side as he was going through and like figuring it all out <laughs> yeah. i figured out the vectors but it just didn't, didn't and then play he out undid the vectors yeah i also as a note deployed about two inches further back because i opted to take this side of the table so i didn't have to deal with the uh the d3 spike wall again yeah or so not he, again just period he won roll and then he's like yeah you get to go first and i'm like that is not what i wanted at yeah. all on this scenario and especially i'm playing harma so i want the maneuver position real real bad and you want the maneuver position because you're starks but now you want it even more so because i want it so yeah, so i just sat on it and i'm like all right i'm gonna put the trackers up and i don't have a good reason why i use it on the trackers and not edard's unit yeah and honestly like the for me, like I think that the the horse, the maneuver position for turn two, it, or round two, is much more important than round one. So and I'm fine giving you first statement. turn here. Yeah, it gives you the option whether or not you actually want to bring in that unit that you didn't deploy on the board or not. Mm -hmm. And uh, I was initially not too upset about round one because I was like round three I'll bring the uh, the outriders in with Brendan, and then I reread their ability and it says that says at the start of the turn. <laughs> Yeah, start of a or round. Or the round, sorry. Start of a round. Brian, what is a round versus a turn? And we ended up looking it up, and I'm like, <laughs> oh, they don't get to come in this turn. Yeah, so they they, oh, they want to come in good. on, like, turn two or turn late turn one. Yeah. But I played, I've only played with Brendan once, so I forgot completely about how they deploy. And it, as a note, Jarl's off the table if uh, I didn't say any. I know I didn't say anything didn't about say that. that. But I mentioned that you had one unit off as well. Yep, he's with the Cave Dweller Savages, so... Our early turns look like they were pretty ho hum. I mean, you did the maneuver with the Kranigman. Yeah, which again should have been Eddard's unit. So that there's another thing for this scenario that I forgot until Brian reminded me. When your commander activates, anything within 12 inches, you can stick another token on. So exactly. So had I put that on yeah. Eddard, I would have been able to then, when Eddard's unit activates, stick that on another unit. Yeah, I think they're coming up pretty soon here. We realize for the second time I've played this scenario that we forgot to mark units yep so uh anyways i had put craster down on the crown to zap the kranigman because their morale's not real great but they ended up like steamrolling their uh yeah, their dice like 10 or something like that yeah. it was i had no complaints i wanted that spot if brian didn't take it yep and well with harma i don't have my man's tricks so my guys are pretty susceptible to crown zapping and there's a corpse pile right there in the bottom and i'm like the more i can get rid of like those spear wives or whatever you know i just want it all gone yeah right now the free folk raiders are sitting in the middle of that that death pile 
and they and then, <laughs> take a lot of casualties so that was and shooting, the morale test. And then the morale test. The morale <laughs> test did significantly more damage than the shooting did. Yep. I was just like, I'm gonna throw these free folk raiders up here and just start the start the trades. And my my hope then was that Harma could come in behind them and either throw spears or charge them. Um well, I was thinking I might be able to throw spears first. So Lady Val went down on the coin here. And instead of doing the coin thing, we, we maneuvered. And uh, I'm trying my best to work around that palisade without knocking it. And there's just really no way I can get within uh, the short range to throw spears. So I've got to get creative with what I do with Harma next turn or when she activates. Yep. And you discussed, yeah, you had a, quite a few extra little options and... Yeah, there were some different directions I could have gone. You just couldn't really go forward anymore because you ended up getting gummed up on the guys on the corpse pile. Yep, they were just they were just a little the I moved them their full nine, but they just weren't in quite the right place for me. So, yeah, it is what it is. Um, so right now I'm debating if I take Greywind and put it into that unit of four guys. Yeah, to just try and knock them off because Greywind more likely than not is going to hit both attacks and then. And that corpse pile from the side. You're yeah, more there's a good not chance. Gonna fail that morale check. Yeah, good chance that two. unit would go down. And instead, I'm just like, yeah, we'll put Eddard's unit forward. Well, you kind of, yeah, you got the thing is, is like, Which, had we actually, I think your unit would have been within maybe long had I remembered that rule. Um, the Harma unit, maybe, which didn't yeah. really matter at this point, mm -hmm. but maybe it. I, I'm not 100 percent certain. Not even close. I know that there's uh when you start activating you're eighteen inches away or twelve inches away between us, but yep. and I just so I don't miss it, I did try to long bomb a charge here because I do I want the free folk raiders to get up the table. So if I fail a charge when I'm going up there, if I, at least I just move, that's all I want to do. So if I roll a five to get there, which is what I was looking for, I'm happy with that. So um the free folk raiders are kind of like they're really here to just gum you up a little bit not even gum you up but also distract you from what i'm actually trying to do because you can see that none of my cave dweller savages which are proxied by trappers right now have are moving and i don't want to move them until things have kind of gotten into a position to where the battle lines are yeah I, I know where i can get to on the flanks i want to use the free folk raiders to do things like this to have the berserkers charge them like i don't care if you charge berserkers with free folk raiders that's what i want you to do because now if you pay attention to where everything's po or everything's kind of placed, your Berserkers are in Free Folk Raiders, and the distance between the Free Folk Raiders and the Cave Dweller Savages on the top of the screen is roughly, well, it's longer than their march, so they will get into your flank for sure. Yeah, and I was, when I did it, I'm like, yeah, I should be able to get rid of these guys pretty quick between Ned and Rob. Mm-hmm. And then I didn't realize that we were fighting on a weirwood tree, not a normal tree. <laughs> yeah. Because, like, when I was debating what, what I was going to do with Rob, I'm like, oh, I got to remove that speed when I do that charge. Mm -hmm. And then Brian's like, oh, that's a weirwood. And I'm like, oh, oh, you mean the exact type of tree that I don't really want to fight on that you do? And he giggled. I mean, it was, <laughs> <laughs> it's good. Enough. I mean, a seven plus morale, I guess, is better than eight. Yeah. By a lot. Yeah, a decent amount. I mean, it, it saved them from losing a ton there. I mean, the, I think those seven attacks were all um, actual wounds. Those were not, all actual wounds. You did not fail yeah, morale. Not morale. So I want to try and keep those berserkers as gummed up as possible. And I think the... I'm not quite sure what we're hemming and hawing about right now. Um, uh, I think this is when we realized we were supposed to put... Oh, yeah, this is where I went, oh, we have to mark units. Yep. Or maybe... That's at least coming yeah. here in a second. It's coming eventually because I know that those... I know where the units have been marked. So we're not talking about marked units yet. Um, I think oh, I was debating charges. So where your charge was yeah. going to go. So now I've got it to where the Berserkers are gummed up by two units of Free Folk Raiders. And now I've got the one where they get Sundering and uh, Critical Blow when they're engaged with two things uh and they they hit pretty well uh, i think it was five saves that you've got to take on this one and i don't believe you passed a single one well maybe you do pass I a think I single one, one because that was yeah, four guys four. gone and uh you you do your morale well because you're like a three i'm a three at this point <laughs> so snakes i'm 
my free folk raiders are doing what I want them to do. It's just a matter of can they survive long enough to keep the free folk or to keep the the cave dwellers there or not the cave dwellers, the berserkers there so that the cave dwellers can get to where they need to be. Yeah, and this is when I'm like, uh, Grey One needs to run, I think. Yeah, Grey One needs to get somewhere. Because, like, ah, do I, again, I'm just him and Han, do I go into that unit or not? And then this is where Here's we, you're marking. like, oh, yeah, we need to mark stuff. I'm going to mark yep. Grey One. And I'm like, well, he sure as hell isn't, or heck isn't going into that area now. And I, I tried to not be super biased based on where things were on the table here. Like, I will always mark a dog well, yeah. to keep them out of the game. And also make it so that if you want to put them anywhere ever, I will kill them quite yep. easily. And then I took the Kranigmen because I'm. I, it's a toss up between it's the Berserkers and the Kranigmen because Kranigmen are slippery a little bit, um, but they're really susceptible to the Crown Zap. And uh, the Berserkers, they're still fragile too, but I just wanted. I think the Kranigmen were the right call. The Kranigmen are the right call. They are. I would actually argue that the Berserkers are slipperier because the berserkers also they're faster because they got robbed the berserkers are also more likely to kill something which is another reason why i shouldn't be exactly. marking them and another reason to mark the dog because the dog is very unlikely to kill something to get yep. points had you marked the berserkers i would have ended up getting more points yeah because right? they are hopefully they will kill, kill stuff yeah they'll kill more things so now i'm i think i'm working on what i want to do with harma um yeah. again i'm i'm i think we're i'm getting pretty uh, loose with my uh, charges not loose in, ter in in terms of rules or anything but loose in terms of like I'm gonna go for these fours and I think with this one I might have needed a two or a three I think with this one you you were debating it you needed something pretty low and then you're like oh but Eddard yeah in the side yeah, because I didn't want to charge in the front and be like, okay, well, now that means that Eddard's going to charge Harma's unit. And losing your commander in Fire and Blood is horrible, especially early. Like, if I don't have, if I lose Harma by turn two, I'm not going to be able to get points as easily. And I am, for the first time in a long time, playing a bunch of units that are worth points. So Harma's at unit legitimately activates and marks the Kranigman. Yep, for the extra bonus point. Yep, and, uh, you just shift forward, and I think that's it because nothing's in. Yeah, I think that was. Yeah, I had to. There was just a small smidgen that I could go, and uh, I had a plan. And I was really hoping you'd attack because I had uh, <laughs> Eddard's card Fury for the Fallen. Yeah, and I was gonna go clear out my guys right there. Mm -hmm. So I I had a definitely had something else going on to to make it to for. Ugh. I had something else going on that made it so I didn't want to charge with Harma's unit. But now you can see the the, the back you, the backyard free folk unit move to a very ineffectual place. But those free folk or the savages on the top and bottom, they're exactly just rocketing up the like. side. And it's like, okay, well, now I don't need to work to get flanks with these guys. Like, I will get what I want here. And yeah. the, 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 and so begins the saga of the migrating tactics board. <laughs> Yep. <laughs> we had to move it so that your people could go down. Yep. Um, that because they're the the Harma list takes up a lot of space in general, just like most free folk lists do. But uh, she also is playing to kind of yeah, she's kind yeah. gonna gonna kind of wrap around you a little bit more than what like a Mance list would. Whereas Mance, I think when I play Mance, it seems like I typically am layering unit another unit behind another unit. You know, it's like you're trying to get through layers of meat yep and because you pincered me i i didn't have you know my ponies aren't on the board so i don't have as much board presence as what i could have yep and, and you're pincering me hard and we were i think i was operating under the assumption that uh there's a chance that or that that your your uh horses or that your outriders could come in and do something right away but with them not being able to activate right away i was like well i'll just turn my body my, i'll give my butt again. to you yeah yeah yep here's another another move for it so craster goes down on the on the horse i use feigning maneuver so that harma's unit can charge i roll my two dice and make it i go in and hit the flank and i f screw this up because i printed off a bunch of cards before i left work so that i could use them but i forgot to print off a double copy of the commander cards so what i did was i paraphrased the cards and on a little slip of paper and slide slid them into my thing 
the really important piece of information that I missed putting on this paraphrased card was that you have to charge to the closest flank. So oh. she would have be, she would have had to go to the other side of those Kranigmen. Oh wow! Because <laughs> yeah. right now what I just played was that card I was talking about, yeah. Fury for the Fall, and so Edard would have Edard could have gotten into the right into Harma's ass. butt. Yep. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> so so uh, I'm gonna be pr- <laughs> I'm gonna be printing off some more cards later, so I don't <laughs> so I don't jack people while I play games with them, because that was. That would have made that a little different. I mean, <laughs> I think if I, given that, I probably wouldn't have used Harma to do that. I probably would have used like Cave Dweller Savages or something, so that Harma wasn't gonna like be with right there. with it. Well, but, the problem is um, if Harma isn't where she is right now, she and you make an attack, Edard's charging her this turn. Yeah, and not just that; she's probably gonna hit that stupid uh, angry fence. Yeah, the the, <laughs> the spike wall too. So yeah, uh, Edard makes short work of the. The free folk unit, and I have learned now that when you kill a free folk unit, you just set the tray again because you're either going to bring it back or it's going to be a pain in the butt to find the models. Yeah, sifting through a pile of like 96 models to find four spear wives. Not fun. <laughs> yeah, it's a bummer. So uh, now it's Edard's still kind of like in this position where he is going to try and get the flank on that other free folk unit, but there's one behind it that's going to get into Edard's flank there too. So no matter what, you're kind of in this really like not super great position. Yep. So I ended up playing um, Edard's card where he goes with plus two dice and then another unit immediately activates after him. Yeah. You're just really hammering me with a lot of his cards right now. I I felt like I didn't have a choice. I needed to get this area cleaned up as much as I could. Yeah. Because that other side of the table is, it's not dead to you, but it's going to be a hard fight because those Kranigmen are not It's going to be a rough fight over there. And then... I was thinking, yeah, you know, like uh, him coming in on the charge, the Zerkers, mm-hmm. you know, then activating right away. Eight dice going in. Shouldn't be a problem to clear four guys away. Yep. And then uh, the... I only rolled four. And I'm like, oh, no. <laughs> and then Brian's like, ha, suck it. I saved three. Yeah, that was. Uh... <laughs> or I saved one. Yeah. I kept the one dude left, and he 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 he, he stomped his morale test. So yep. that is the the the, the most uh, heroic free folk raider. And yeah, any anything but that. And I'm just like, because uh... then you you don't get the I don't get the side charge from the savages, and Edard is uh, now Edard's going to get again. charged again by the yep. by, on the side from those other guys. So we're getting a lot of flanks here, and uh, I'm pretty happy with it. So yeah. I take the opportunity to get the free folk cave dwellers in on the side when I, while I can, and they're throwing their seven dice, re-rolling. I don't. I think they do all right here, but uh, with you having that one berserker left in the rank, um, they don't get any other bonuses. But we take out four more yep. or three more berserkers, so that wasn't terrible for them. Not a bad activation. So I think now you're just really like you're kind of in this weird hard space like you aren't uh you don't quite know what to do, right? Yeah, I I got two NCUs left. I've got an activated Edard, an activated Zerker unit. I haven't done Grey Wind. I haven't done the Kranig men. And I'm pretty sure what I ended up doing here was dropping onto the wound track to restore the berserkers up yeah i think we were talking about whether it was better to get the kranigman up because they're marked and they have a victory point on them or uh try and keep the berserkers alive because as they die they get more powerful but catlin makes it so you don't care about that so really you just want to try and keep them in the game but you take the swords here instead Oh, I did take the swords. And I here. think it's just really to clear off that one free folk raider. So yep. a full a unit of berserkers That's is what it was. throwing ten dice into one dude. <laughs> and I'm like, well, I'll roll these dice for I for, still think, for I think you saved like three or four of them it, still though. Yep, but it wasn't ten. <laughs> it wasn't ten. <laughs> so Edard gets it so I don't charge him on the side with those uh uh, with those raiders yeah. but i'm okay with that because i really just wanted the charge on the side for the berserkers more um more so i wanted to get the quick cave de- cave dweller savages in on there. the side because yeah. i think they're a little bit it's a little bit more important to get them in there instead of the free folk 
Um, this is a big attack from someone. Oh, it must have been Harma's unit doing something. I think they activated for real? Yeah, because feigning maneuver is not their activation. So this was, she didn't charge. So what they did is she used her order to get three extra dice and uh make them vulnerable and make them vulnerable so they and then you gave another yep. point for they got kicked for up a point and they maybe i didn't use the order on them because I, I you lost five i didn't have re-rolls though and i'm only hitting on four so maybe that's right i think i think uh i didn't see me put a point on anyone for eddard right there when i activated him last either um no i don't think so huh whoops it is what it is um maybe we did like at, like Just without without actually it putting yeah, it on there I'm and did sure. it on off the side of the table because I, I think at some point in this game i end up moving the dice that we're tracking on over to where the tactics board Probably. is because right now we're keeping track off the table yep so right here i'm trying to figure out all right so in order to get out of this combat i would need to roll a four or five in order to then be able to shoot mm -hmm. which felt awful Plus, then you're not going into the unit that you want to just try and kill them. Yep. Like those four too guys. Far away from them. Yep. So you're kind of. And I was like, well, I could go over that fence thingy. And then if I roll a three, four, five, or six, I die. So there's that. <laughs> yeah, I'm just going to. Yep. I think so you're just guys killing. Up to full is the right choice. Yep. Or not full, but up to three ranks is the right choice. Because mm -hmm. then when the savages come back into me, they don't have the extra bonuses that they normally have. Yep, really clutch. Because getting the plus one to hit and. I think vicious. They get plus one to hit and sundering. I think for the first one, and then for the second one, they get vicious. Yep, and so, then you're, you just charge me right there and went yeah. to half or fifty percent rather on the other side. Yep, I figure they're they're they only have one rank, but three three dice might actually get me to kill them because that they fail a couple saves, and then maybe they fail their panic test and I wipe them. Like that's what I was hoping for. And I think you're playing a few cards here. Um, they lose one dude out of the three that were left, and then they do fail their panic test enough to where yeah. I pull a, a massive amount of points. So it's one point for the unit, two points because they're marked, and then two points because they are um, they have two tokens on them, two yeah. victory coins. So I scored five points and off that one unit. I played the North Remembers, I think. Yeah, I think so. And, you could get Ed Art yep, to activate. And I decided to go for Stark Fury which was silly because the North Remembers already had Critical Blow. Yeah, but... And I rolled three for those deaths <laughs> right yep, there. Punished a little bit for, for and, stacking uh, rolls. Yeah, I forgot about it, and it is what it yeah, is Yeah, you've there. got your five points sitting up there now, too, so we, we have the points okay. settled. Yep, so it was a decent amount. I Brian just rolled a handful of dice, and I have no complaints about that result. <laughs> yeah, I think a couple passed, and then the panic test leaves them with two guys so yep. i'm i'm happy as long as i'm jamming up units i'm okay with that like my my free folk raiders are insignificant and you're not getting to the the spear wives or the the cave dwellers so they're not getting extra points for those and i'm i'm perfectly fine with just having my raiders get evaporated yeah they're really there so that harma and the cave dwellers can get to where they need to go and so Grey Wind activates. Yep, and is getting, I'm like, getting All right, spicy. We're going to go on the, we're gonna go the side. <laughs> yeah. hit. All right, take your... Take my six pluses. Take your sixes. I pass one. Or no, no I fail both. both. And then you weren't within yep. the tree, but you were within the corpse pile. Yep. So I'm like, all right, anything they, but that. Yeah, they stomp it. They're, the Harma's making these uh, making these free folk pretty, uh, pretty zealous. So... Yeah. Now I'm happy that Grey Wind's kind of pinched up in the middle to where um, I can uh, try and at least Val, get him. Right, and then turned around. Yeah, I think I out. activated Val here so I could get the free f or the cave dwellers to get into the side. And since I out activate you now, I just charge on your flank. And uh, they, th I think this one they do okay. Maybe. Yeah, you would have killed the guy. Yeah, five hits got through. So yep. one guy goes down. And I'm like, oh, hold on a second. Yep. I'm just going to do the retreat. We're going to run away. And then we had a panic test that I can't remember. I'm, I'm pretty sure it comes up soon. Or or you passed it already. Um, there were a yeah, couple of engagements I wasn't the with these guys. Here. Yeah, you were out of the six. And so this is where I'm like, I'm, I'm just going to run away. Yeah? Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's no reason why I couldn't. And then I just go backwards 10. You can't charge me. I charge you. Because I didn't want to make them my first activation because again i know that i need to get the horses to stop my flank from getting got 
Yep. And, and then uh, we just have to position correctly. Yep. And then Brian was kind enough to be like, hey, uh, you know that they can charge with the horse, right? <laughs> yeah, and I was kind enough to remind you that they have rapid assault because you were complaining about their points. And you're like, these guys are just not like there's seven points with <laughs> seven dice. And I'm like, yeah, they're just built in with a free charge, whatever. And then I'm like, <laughs> they oh. suck. <laughs> oh, that's not so, so bad. Yeah, and I think that when I told you that right right now, I think is it's right right when I tell that. you that, and I said if you want to move them closer, go for it, because like from there you're not gonna Be you got to roll a twelve <laughs> or no, I'm not roll a twelve. I, I, you got to roll a six, six or maybe a five, five or six. Yeah, but it's not not I'm, good. I'm numbers. just over ten away. Yeah, at that so point, we just like, like yeah, just, yeah, we'll just move just you forward. It. Yep get you to where you need to be and make you have you make the right choice yeah because then i'm able to just basically windmill slime onto the horses like i know i need to yep and you that's the thing is i have to i force you to make that activation because i've got jarl sitting on the side with cave dwellers ready to come in uh harma or harma could get back feigning maneuver from the from the uh discard pile and but, i was just not ready to have that happen again yeah and then you also have to be mindful of like when you take the horse, that means that I get the first real combat activation. Because I think I don't mind the cave dwellers on the side here getting taking the hits for Harma and her unit. Like she can sit there and live in the in happy fun world. Um, but I I get to do the like Harma gets to activate before things go, or the cave dwellers get to activate before. Didn't you put the guy on swords? I did. I ended up this turn. I end up. Uh, I was. Saying, well, now I'm. I had like red in my eyes, right? Like I often get that when I'm playing free folk or just any combat-oriented army. I think anything, like even a control army, I'm just like, I want to charge. I want to charge. But I attack. I'm getting Guys, ready to throw those dice. Yeah, man. I'm getting ready to throw dice for those cave dweller savages up top, and I'm like, oh wait, let's be smart and take the swords and then do an auto activation attack. And uh, you, I was weakened, so you expend that, and I still hit with six. Yeah, it was. It was monstrous. It happened. Yep. Because I hit with six, and then you said, "Yeah, we'll spend that weakened token," and then I hit with the six again. Yeah, it was less than pleasant. I think I saved two though. Ah, uh, yeah. I think got uh, you lost uh four. Yeah, or something. three, something like that. I'm not sure. But now you're changing facing to, left. to hit me back. Catlin's influence is still on them from that maneuver position, so Which they're still. Th yeah, I know they're at their last rank. So what? Who cares? Um, you didn't hit super well. No, I I think you just only rolled four dice there. Yep, and I, I did save a couple. Yep, so you, you rolled four dice, and you saved two. Two people died. I rolled ten dice, four made it through, and then two saved. I was cringing. Yeah. So uh, I think now I'm just trying to figure... I, I have a couple cards in my hand that I want to try and... Uh, mess with like there's just a ton of options when you look at the the free folk deck with harma right like when you're doing mance it's like yeah i can use swift advance to get some mediocre unit up here because i'm just playing a bunch of guys but with harma now i've got spear wives i've got uh and i think you played the faint advance thingy again right no here. this yeah. is swift maneuver because swift maneuver. my my measuring all my measuring was to try and figure out okay how can i do this to get um, to get Harma on Greywind. Yeah, can I thread the needle between that corpse pile and the uh, the spike pit to um, avoid them? And I couldn't, so I I found out that the spike pit was also hindering. So I decided to just move on to it right away. I took three wounds, but it's not such a big deal for spear wives. And, and now you're not going to be failing your charge or you're not going to end up having the disorder charge on a one or a two exactly right? like, so i just get in and i think i'm debating here whether i want to use harma's order or not because i really want that pupper so many times i've tried to i've been like okay i'm gonna kill this dog real easy when i could have like pumped the attacks up a little bit and they tank the hits like i know i'm i'm sundering and i'm coming from the side so gray wind's got a horrible save but i i oh I, I was debating and then decided not to. Yep, and I lost by one. Yep, so you... like it was it was close to regret for you. Yep, it could have been terrible. But now Harma killed the unit. Harma marked the dog. Yep, and so he was, was also marked, so he was worth four, four points, points total. total. And I shoot right up to nine. 
So I'm sitting pretty nice here. I don't care again if my Free Folk Raiders are mostly obliterated. I've got two units of Cave Dweller Savages that are okay in surviving, and Harma's staring right at the back of a Berserker unit. And I have the top of next turn. Yeah, and all I'm wishing right now is that Eddard wasn't engaged. <laughs> I'm wishing for any yeah. card that says make a free retreat or anything of that nature. Yep, I've been really lucky with the free folk, uh, with the raider uh, morale saves. They've been holding in there real nice. Yep, and uh, all I want out of life right now is just for Eddard to be facing not that way up during his activation. <laughs> yeah. Because I really want him to go into to Harma yep. to keep those berserkers alive. So a couple saves on those guys, and I think you retreat them backwards after I punch them. Yep. Uh, you, so, a morale test. So you took a couple wounds from me and a morale test. It was five wounds total, and yep. then we just went back and forth about the math, and it was like, yeah, you have two You have two wounds on this one guy, and a, a horse is gone. But yep. now you've D3 healed, so you get your horse back. Or you, you rolled I a two. two. So yep. you get your one one guy back full, but one horse is still gone. Yep. It just got a little little weird there. And, and uh, Eddard to go heal those guys before I activated the others. Yeah, because you were thinking Eddard needs to heal something, and you were debating whether it was Eddard's unit or the Berserkers. Yep. So you give it to the Berserkers, and now you're just trying to smash I know that on. Brian's uh, going to come into them hard next turn because he's got the top. Yep. So now you're just trying to smash into the Free Folk. Yep. And, and then, they go down. Yep. Four attacks made it through there. Brian saved all but one. It looked like. Yeah. So it was close to surviving, because I don't think that you, was a great roll for you. No, and then you whiffed hard on your uh, leadership there. Yep. That's what finally got those guys. Mm -hmm. So you end up pivoting around and trying to figure out where you're going to maneuver with Yeah, and then with I them. realized that I can't like interrupt you from getting onto those Zerkers, mm -hmm. and it was pretty sad. Yeah, there's no... And now I've, I put Craster down and did a endless horde i've been pocketing that card this whole turn because i was like eddard or the horses are gonna get it in the butt <laughs> and uh so i since i, I don't have the horse which is fine because i can use their activation next turn. turn yeah but now i've got eddard in a pinchy spot yep so then horses going in yep. four guys and they pass their morale i think the cave dweller savages on the bottom of the screen failed their morale like twice um, but they're still holding in there, which is good for me. I just want to keep your stuff tied up. Occupied. Yep, there. that's all I want. Yeah, I was really hoping for a better swing with the ponies right there because if I can get that unit cleared up, then I get that free move towards Harma. Yep. And then when that unit activates next turn, at least maybe I do something. Mm -hmm. But instead, they're going to be stuck here. Yeah, I think you pulled some more Eddard shenanigans here with a card. Yep. Those free folk raiders went down. So now you're able to make it so you can try and get to Harma, or get to the the free folk raiders and back. And you're, I think you're trying to negotiate. How do I need to turn to make this happen? Yeah. Initially, I was like, can I go between them? Like, if I were to stick enough of my base so that he contacts me before them, mm -hmm. and then I realize that I don't have enough movement yep. for that to happen. And I'm like, well, maybe he'll charge me in the butt. Yeah, because I could... I'll present the target. Yeah, I could go for... Like, Eddard has the same save as the Berserkers. Well, no, the Berserkers are going down to a 6, but Eddard goes down to a 5. Or no, yep. they both go to a 6, because in the back it's You're minus 2. Yep. Um, so, right now I'm thinking about what I need to... What do I need to do to make the game happen for me, right? Yeah, for some reason I thought that I would have a 5 save instead of a 6 save, and I'm like, yeah, we'll see if he takes it. Yeah, it was the... some. Sundering on the charge for the spear wives is nice, and I just with the rear charges it's even better. So I think I need I tell myself that I need to take the opportunity here to get into the back of the berserkers, and uh, I don't want to worry about Eddard being all doing something weird and somehow making it through. So I use their order, and I use the card that gives them crit blow and sundering. It was it was a thing because I was like I I need to hit. I need to hit hard. So I end up rolling like two or three sixes, and I think it was 13 saves I, overall. It was 13 saves, and, and we, I, we counted. I by one. Yeah, we counted it out, and then you rolled a panic test and failed by one. No, no, no. The panic. The, oh, I, no. I they, got, they got killed exactly. They got killed yeah. by one guy over. Yeah. Yep. Like it was, it so was tragic. That secures. It was happening. That's, so, that gets me up to 10. Um, 
So it secures my 10 points right now. Yep. Uh, so you, I had, I, my big thing right now is I just have to not give you points. And the cave dweller savages on, because you're sitting at six. So the, the most amount of points you can get from me right now, I think, are three. Yep. Because I mark a unit, kill a unit, kill a unit. Yep. And then you're out of activations and you're out of card shenanigans. So there's not a ton that you can really do. Yep. I had, uh, and out of boom or out of like when that unit activates a free move, mm -hmm. Switch I had advance. that right here so that I could go into someone. Yeah, you were trying to catch up with something that you could try and kill for a point, right? Like, yeah. I'm like I need points, <laughs> and that's why I moved hard because you're like screw these free folk raiders because they're not worth enough to me. Um, so I feel like I had gotten Harma enough out of the way um, to where she wasn't a really viable thing for you to go for especially no, with the number of bodies that i have she already activated so i'm like i'm just gonna go at these cave savages because yep you win anyway if nothing else i can stop you from getting a point when they activate into my side or something yep and uh, they only have a six plus save so you don't have you don't have to worry about harm like harma's five plus might get a couple through but with a six plus save it's not that i'm likely to uh survive that especially when you rolled like three sixes I got, yeah i got seven attacks for you and then or I had seven make it through, and then three sixes. Yeah, like so those was... cave dwellers don't have a chance. Yep. So you end up scoring two more points out of that and go to seven. Eight. I went to eight, because I was at six, oh, yeah, eight. seven, yep. eight. And I'm like, I'm, I'm feeling pretty good. And then I look at the scoreboard, and I'm like, huh, he's at ten. There is not another turn. Mm -hmm. So this doesn't matter. I just kill kill everything to kill see <laughs> yeah. in red now yep and we still haven't populated the tactics board with anything so there's like a couple things that can happen with the tactics board and i really um i don't know i'm not sure what i'm doing next but i'm measuring out some stuff with the free folk uh, raiders you're wondering if you're going to be able to charge me the button oh if I, yeah if you roll a six that was what we yeah we're trying to figure out like where is edard safe yep and that's when i realized that it doesn't matter where edard is safe mm -hmm. like we, yeah, so we did I'm all this. I'm pretty sure, like, I just looked at it, and that's when I, my hand movement right there was like, oh, oh, it doesn't matter. Okay. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it doesn't, it just doesn't. So I think here I'm trying to figure out what the math is for Jarl to get if in. Get Jarl on, okay. And then I forget that his unit is a cave dweller unit, so I was measuring nine inches instead of the, the, um, I was measuring with a five inch movement in mind instead of six. Yep. So I decide to make a really, really not good choice, and <laughs> I put Jarl on the side with a unit that hasn't activated yet. Yeah. So. <laughs> and I'm just like, windmill slam swords, we're attacking these two guys that should have died a turn ago. Yep. Four attacks. Four make it through, Brian. Which is average, right? Yeah, like, I'm I have no complaints about only that. four making it through. So they go down, and then you go up to nine somehow. We must have been behind a point or something because no, I know we counted I went up it to right. Nine. That was right. Oh yeah, because you kill one. And yep, then that's it's not why worth you, two. you made the mistake right there. Is I got that he wasn't worth two. No, they should have been worth two. Why? Because you kill them for a point on fire or on fire and blood, and then they're worth a victory point. Or maybe I'm wrong. I'm just I think I think we've we mathed it out while we were doing this and the. No, you told me they were only worth a point when we played. The alg the the math on fucking. God damn it! I said it again. Um, on fire and blood is a is a pain. Because I got for two me. points when I active or kill the other cave dweller savages because because you marked, marked them. them. Yep. Right. Because mm -hmm. otherwise it's just a pointy guy. I thought. Yeah, I think you're right. And the mistake that he made was that unit hasn't technically activated. Yep, you're right. Uh, if, uh, if I roll baller on that charge, that they're gonna likely get into them. Yeah, you and have they to hope. Love morale. Yeah, they they don't make their charge. <laughs> And they don't pass their morale test because they're within six of the pile. I thought, oh yeah, you're right. You yep. had like I just one guy barely go away. touched it. Yeah. So one guy goes down, um, and I'm not feeling super happy about this because like, if I would have just deployed this unit on the other side of the table or not deployed them, period, I wouldn't have had any, any problems. Issues. Yep. And so then I'm trying to figure out: Do I dig for two cards? Yep. Because I have a devastating charge left. Yeah, somewhere in there is a sure. devastating impact. So yep, or devastating impact. I I went through my my hand had nothing. Yep. And then I went through my discard. I'm like, I only use one, so I know there's another. 
what other cards do I have that might help me get rid of this unit? Because mm -hmm. you already use Sansa. Yep. Like, her, her big ability is done. Yep, I use her, and I still think that was the right choice. I ended up using Sansa to go get another one of those things that let Eddard get angry and charge. Yeah, Northern Defiance or something attacks. like that. Or Fury attacked. for the Fallen. Fury for the Fallen. So then I ended up, I'm like, whatever, I have to zap them. They're within the range. Yep, and they pass it. They so And then you windmill slam for your wounds. Yeah, I go for the one wound back because I really am at the point here where I need to get every body I can to try and survive this attack. Like, I can't afford to fail anything. Yep, so then six make it through. Yep. And then you actually saved three of them. A few of them, yeah, and, and then, then I lost. Leadership check. <laughs> I failed it and lost leadership, but that was that was the game. I, I pulled that one out because I just did something dumb. And uh, otherwise, it was a really, like, tit-for-tat game. It with, was uh, tit-for-tat. It was enjoyable. Yeah, I really did enjoy that game. So The, the feeling of getting swarmed, I could have done without, but <laughs> it made it a lot more intense for me. Yeah, it was, with, especially with so few activations. Is, yeah. Anyway, thanks for having me again.